Greetings, sir and sirette, and welcome back to Nimbatus with me, Lathrex. And of course, welcome to the first look at this game since my computer broke down a couple of months ago. The game has been heavily updated since then, and hopefully, it's going to be even better than before. One of the main changes is that now you can actually upgrade the Nimbatus itself. The Nimbatus, of course, being the main ship you're flying around in, not the drones themselves. And one of the upgrades looks really interesting, because it seems like it might be a win condition. That's right, the campaign may now finally be winnable. And if that's the case, I am going to be incredibly happy. And even if it's not, upgrades are always super fun. There is also a brand new hero, a brand new captain, which we won't be getting into today, but we will be taking a very quick look at. As you can tell, I just now played it just to test this thing out. And yes, it is indeed Christmas Eve. So, new game. We're going to be playing on hard mode. Now, that actually explains what that does. Enemy health 150%, damage 150%, the threat increase is 125%, and you only have three hull points. Whereas on easy, everything is, well, easier. And on normal, everything is, well, normaler. So, let's just put this in. And that's when we're beginning this. This is all the same dialogue as before, I believe. Yep. Feel free to pause it if you'd like to read it, that's why I'm not skipping it. But we have gone over this before in the past on the channel. Okay, so here are our captains. The heavyweight, the pilot, the miner, the engineer, the researcher, which is by far my favourite. And then, the programmer. So, with the programmer, this is really interesting, because all the other bonuses are very, very major. For instance, the researcher allows you to research weapon tech. All the others don't get that. But then the programmer gives you unlimited parts and no deployment costs. Wireless fuel and energy transfer. I believe the engineer only gets one of those. Nope, the engineer gets both. But you can only use autonomous drones. You can't control the drones once you go into a map. Now that is fascinating. I feel like it's both really difficult and really easy at the same time, but most on the difficult side, I think once you understand the game and understand the mechanics, this will become incredibly powerful. So someone like me who derps a lot will probably have a difficult time. But for now, we're going to be testing out the Heavyweight, one of the originals which I've never had the chance to use. It gets extra drone health and the shields are more effective. Which is really good, because apparently there's also a worm boss we can now fight. So, something sturdy, something fun like this, I think is what we're going to go with. Apparently the shops now are also better, so hopefully we won't miss out too much with not being able to have researchable weapon tech, which is a real shame. So then, let's go. So here we are, beginning here. Wait, did I just skip all that dialogue? Back in a second, I'll redo that dialogue so people can read it. Well, let's test this out yet again. So, the heavyweight. And one thing I would like to mention is that I will be doing a one-off video, most likely with the programmer, as soon as I'm back from my little Christmas break. Because that seems just fascinating. But as the main series, testing out everything, I really want to test out the heavyweight, even though it is one of the older additions. So, once again, feel free to pause in order to read the storyline. I think I may have skipped one of them a bit too fast there, but still, with the power of pausing, it should be absolutely fine. So here we are, and straight away, why is that flashing gold and that flashing blue? I have no idea. Or gold and silver, I'm not quite sure. I think it's blue. I think it's blue. So obviously we're going to go this way, so I want to see what on earth is going on over there. So we have the upgrades, and you can see the bonuses you get from your captain, but then all of these. And one of them in particular, like I said earlier, is fairly interesting. The warp drive allows you to return to Earth once fully repaired. Now, I have no idea how we get these levels. We have stealth, decreases threat increase when traveling, which is lovely, so our hull will be a lot safer. Storage, increases the amount of drone parts that can be deployed for free, which is great, so over time you can have larger and larger drones, which is so nice. Finally, I can avoid using just the tiniest little drones and try to be super efficient. Eventually we can just dominate worlds. Fabrication, decreases energy cost per drone part, so combine those two, very happy with that. Sensors, allows you more information on the minimap. And then Bridge shows you more information on the galaxy map. 
I love all of those. I would like a few more, honestly. But this is a fantastic start. Then we have the open hangar, like usual, so we can make our own drones, and I think there's a few things different there. So I'm just going to make a really basic drone. All we need to do is destroy the Corporation Transmitter and locate the black box. This one, though, will give us four common weapons and three uncommon, which is what we're going to go for straight away. And this will give us batteries and basic weapons. Either way, we want both. We'll need two points to escape this system, and they give us one each, so we have to do both anyway. Jump to there, then to there, then to the new area, which I believe will give us the upgrade points. So then, let's make ourselves a drone. Shields, of course, will be our major thing. I know they've changed how the skin system works. Apparently now it's a little bit easier to use, because before it was a bit cumbersome. Okay, so what do we have available then as the brawler? We have a kinetic blaster, we have some shotguns. Ooh, plasma shotguns, which means fire. Okay, I'm happy with that. We have only two shields. So we are going to start off as a small drone, even as a brawler, just because this is everything we have right here. And remember, because we're not the researcher, we can't change our weapons. So I'm just going to very quickly make a very, very basic drone. We really do not have many thrusters. And we don't have any sensors, so what I'm doing now is really silly. I was going to make a self-correcting drone without the sensors to do so. Well, that's silly. So instead, let's do this. That way will be forwards to the right. Both of these will be the W key because that's going forwards. And then we just need some turning thrusters. Like so. And then the opposite. And that way it should turn in quite a balanced way, especially if you put these a bit more central. Give ourselves some fuel. These, of course, will regen over time. We could rotate these, actually, but for now, let's just do this because it's nice and neat. There we are. It can turn. It can move forwards. But yeah, you could rotate them to make the turning a bit more effective, but that seems fine by me. Really easy to control. Okay. Let's add some energy. Okay, the game just crashed. Not good. Thankfully, the game does auto-save, so here we are back again. I can also confirm that was not the game's fault. That was actually my recording software's fault, so don't hold that against the game. Wow, the shield has so much more space as the heavyweight. Still tempted to use two of them, just because if one goes down, we have the other, but we could probably just get away with one. Durability is 4,000. That's not bad at all, so it's double one of our regular items. One or two? I don't know. Have to have a bit of think about that. Okay, that seems reasonable. All we need to do is add a hotkey for that. Yeah, that shield is so much better than on the other captains. Ooh, I love the new sound effects of the plasma weapons. Or perhaps I'm just going mad and that's how I've always sounded. Okay, I think I'll just stick with that for now. We definitely have a lot of improvements to make, but we can just stick with that. Oh, do we want a resource tank? So, a resource tank and a resource collector will allow us to get things like the yellow resource, the red resource. And I think that's all that's in the game currently. But that's going to slow us down. So, I think if I do that, I think what I need to do is probably lose some of our turning. These at the back now. Uh, flip them around. And then what I can do is move these two, put this one at the back instead, put you there to make things easier on myself. Oh, that turning is horrendous. Hmm. I'll be a few too many things on this. We need more thrusters. And this is going to cost us. I would rather be slower with better turning. 
Yep, that's fine. Just quite expensive. We could make this a lot smaller, honestly, but I suppose this will be able to test out the different upgrade systems later on. So let's do this. It'll give us more weapons, which is great. And hopefully we get some more of our resources back anyway. All we need to do is locate the black box, which essentially means just destroy all the debris here. Ooh, that's a new animation. Wasn't much, but it's new. And I like new things. And apparently there are more new events as well when you travel from system to system. Okay, there's some debris. Anywhere else? I believe it's the ones with the little glowy bit, which is what we're after. Oh, small enemy. Glorious fire. Has fire still been nerfed? Oh, it's definitely stronger than it used to be. So at one point it got weakened really heavily. That seems better than it was. There we are. But nowhere near as powerful as it was originally. Originally it would basically just kill anything. So that's good, because I've always loved a bit of fire. Doesn't seem like as many resources here, so good job I added all the shields and weapons and everything. Not exactly necessary. Bit of overkill, really. Well, couldn't have carried that even if we wanted to. Oh no, we do actually have a magnet. We should equip the magnet to the back of this drone so we can start collecting the scrap and everything. Because I believe the scrap will give us a little bit of yellow resource, and that would have given us red. So, lesson learned. Have the magnet. The magnet. Okay, we have a cryo shotgun and a cryo short laser. I do like cryo lasers, not such a big fan of cryo shotguns. What's the upgrade that I had there? What are you? Minus 300% recoil. Well, that is actually enough to sell me on that. But I still would like some fire, but I may, it, if I get a secondary fire weapon, I may swap this with the main weapons here. And hopefully I can talk properly in a second as well, which would be good. Just of note, it is now actually 4am on Christmas Eve, so, you know, I'm a little bit tired, my mind isn't quite as sharp as usual, let's face it, that's not particularly sharp to begin with. I did have a magnet, didn't I? Ah, a magnet. So we just pop that there, now we can start picking up scrap as well. This is the Jack of All Trades drone, which honestly isn't a good thing. In this game, that's not what you should go with, you should go with specialised and cheap. So the bare minimum to get the job done, which normally means specialising in one role, then just make multiple drones. Which I'll definitely do after this system. The next one is nice and simple. All we need to do is destroy the transmitter. First things first though, let's see how much this scrap is actually worth. Not that much, but, you know, it's a little bit, so we can collect that from this world. I believe the transmitter is over here. Okay, gonna back off. Just saw the shield going down. And now we'll let that recharge, and we'll have a second go. Okay, mission complete, but I'm just going to stick around for a little bit, trying to gather all of these lovely bits of scrap, and seeing if there's any resource on the planet for us to harvest. Wow, that is way heavier than the last one. Okay, two more ice lasers. Lovely, and more batteries, which is always fantastic. So now we can choose to either go up here, or go down here. So what do we get? Lots of resource and weapons, which is great. More fuel and some basic weapons, which is nice. And red resource and upgraded weapons. So that is all very tempting, but we still want to see what exactly that is. Because I have no idea. That's definitely a shop, so what's that? 
kind of looks like a shop as well. Well, something new to me anyway. Destroy the Corp Transmitter, get some TNT. We don't have any decouplers right now, so that'll just be a uh, one-shot weapon, let's say that much. More batteries, which would be good, and just destroy the hives, which is always a fun one. Plus, I prefer that type of world to that type of world. And it's my least favourite type of world, so I'll probably avoid that one altogether. So, yep, d just uh, destroy the transmitter for resource, and then destroy the hives. Any event? Sadly not. Okay, this time around then, I'm going to copy this drone. And I'm going to make one without the resource collector and without the magnet. This time I just want to get the mission done, so that will make it a lot cheaper, which kind of counters the whole getting no resources from the world itself. Yeah, straight away, that is way better. And we don't really need all these weapons. We could just go with the two of these, honestly. And still probably get the job done nice and safely. After testing, we also do not need so many fuel tanks. We have way too many for this drone. We'll already run out. We're now on the second tank, so both of them are now regenning, and it seems like we're fine. How about if we're doing loads of turning? Okay, so if we spam turn, we'll eventually lose fuel, but that's going to be fine for such a long time. I think I can deal with that. Maybe I'll add a third. Yeah, let's add a third. And look how much cheaper now the drone is. This is why I'm so glad that eventually we get more drone parts for free per time, because it means I can avoid doing this all the time and actually have decent-sized drones. I'm also tempted to grab you, put you here instead, and have that as a back button instead. Back buttons make everything easier. Turning is slowed down, but still completely reasonable. And now we can reverse if we get stuck. In fact, because this is now essentially half the price, what we could do is make a third type of drone, which is just a resource carrier. So if the world seems to be worth it for mining and such, give it one weapon so we can clear the way, and all the resource harvesting and magnet stuff. And even then, you can possibly remove the magnets in some worlds. Yeah, efficiency is definitely the key to this game, especially on the more difficult modes where everything is a bit more, well, difficult. Well, we found it. It's over here. Let's get some of you fellows to chase me and I'll kill you on the way. I may have lost half the drone to one of these bugs. They explode, you know. Well, the world is basically resourceless, so definitely a good job we didn't bring all that extra stuff. There we are. Get some resources for that anyway. Move over to here, and now destroy the hives. Hello, pirate. So, if we lose this... I think we lose a hull as well, because they do attack us. No, this isn't the fight one. They're just saying, oh, we're going to reveal it. Okay, never mind. Um, I'm going to pay the resource for this. And honestly, even if they did not offer a fight instead, we don't have a drone strong enough for that event. So I probably skipped most of this mission, because honestly, it's just really, really boring. And there are loads of resources on this world, so I definitely need to come back here and grab everything. But yeah, because the extra health everything has, and only having these two basic weapons, I'm not really struggling to do the mission, it's nice and easy, and it's very efficient, only 30 ah, regular resource to do the mission if I should pay attention. But it's just so dull. There we are. Apparently the grenade launchers are no longer quite as bouncy, so they should be a bit more fun to use. Okay, since this world has loads and loads of resource and I can't bother to go through all that again, what I'm going to do is make this guy even heavier and we'll use him. Because it's just better. 
Apparently this one is male now as well. Now we could test out the grenades, see if they are any better. Maybe. Something to bear in mind is that each new item will cost five. In terms of the deployment cost, this also goes for the medium version. So right now we have the medium battery and the small, so it's way more efficient to have two of these rather than four of these. They give the same output, but literally the smaller ones will cost double for the same output as the medium. I think for now I'm just going to stick with these cryo shotguns. Let's see how they do. Because if it gets so close range, I think that's probably best for this particular mission. Okay, let's go ahead and harvest this world. Yeah, clearly that's a bug. I mean, it is actually a bug, but you know what I mean. Over here, you can see the little fellows getting stuck, but then down here, it seems like because they're being spawned into the rock, they can then travel through it. Much easier. So the one problem with going to a world more than once, although it's better for resources, it does double the amount of threat you're doing per mission since actually going to the planet does give you a little bit of threat. Yeah, I forgot how little damage the specialized shotguns do. Both plasma and frost do less damage than kinetic. Wait, why am I even going to attack you? There's no point in that. Yeah, we need some more just damage weapons. Maybe I should have used the grenade launchers. So I've came to the conclusion, if you're going to a world where you're almost certain the world is not going to be very resource rich, you may as well go with the really super efficient route. But if you're even slightly uncertain about that, it's almost certainly best just to use a heavier drone, even if it is more expensive, because if you get loads of threat and you take damage, you have to repair the hull, which costs resource and could potentially get you destroyed if you're not careful. Okay, that's that one done. We've got a lot of resource from that, and that means we can now finally jump and check what this is. It's the garage, okay. So we need three points, then we get to the wormhole. Let's see what this is first. Oh, okay. So this is where we can level up our stuff. So fabrication will be more worth it on much larger drones, decreases cost per drone part from 5 to 4. There'll be 3 and a 2 I imagine, well that's major. Then this increases the free drone parts by 5, so 5, so it'll be 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Combine those two, that's fantastic. I, I just wish there was more levels after that honestly. We could repair, in fact no we can repair, we can do both, we have just enough. Okay, I think for now, storage, because we just don't have enough parts to make that so worth it, right? So right now, let's have a look see at our hangar. So right now, our largest drone is going to be 23 parts. So if we knock off one each for the 13 over 10, we're getting a discount of 13. However, if we increase five free parts, that's, okay, yes, yeah, so that's more worthwhile. A little skip ahead because the video is getting too long already. We are now destroying some snake eggs and I'm just using a basic drone because these worlds are normally very resource poor. Naturally, there's a huge seam of red resource straight away. And the shop sadly didn't have anything for us because we need red resource to purchase that. So yeah, that would have been really good if we brought our regular drone. Okay, that'll anger the snake, so we need to be really careful now. I heard combat music briefly there. And one more egg down. And this is a two-star mission. After this, we have a choice of three. So I've been around the world, and it seems like this little bit of red is the only resource on the planet. So I am correct, these worlds normally are fairly resource devoid, but... Yeah, that's annoying. Oh, here, Snake. 
No longer angry? Good, okay. I saw an egg a moment ago, but the snake was guarding it. Just one more. A little bit more resource, but that's pretty much it. Okay. Not worth attacking the world again. Got some more trinium. And now we can decide between these three. Destroy the corp, destroy the corp, locate the black box. I'm thinking this one because I do want some more batteries. But saying that, I do want some more medium batteries. That's better than regular. And another storage device is good. Yeah, let's go with that. And let's test out the grenades this time. Grenades are so difficult to get used to. I wish they exploded on impact. Useless versus the swarm attacking us, though. They should pounce off them. Oh, hello. I think the transmitter is over here. Well, that was pretty good. Almost completely destroyed the transmitter there with just that first volley. And there we go. Let's see if there's any resources left around here. I got the tiniest bit of yellow resource earlier, and that was seemingly it. Oh, hello, what are you? Ooh, a chest. That could be red. Let's find out. Oh, it is lovely. Twenty-five, not too bad. Oh, hello, swarms. Okay, let's get out of here. And we are definitely going to be attacked, aren't we? Yep, we're about to lose one whole point to the corporation. Let's see if there's anything new about this then. Yep, we get hit, we know. Ow. As you approach the wormhole, you spot some debris orbiting it. You can probably grab one piece before you get sucked in. Oh, hello. Wait, just plus 50% thrust. Full stop. Is that like a permanent bonus? Okay, this is all new. I'm still curious how we level up our warp drive. Definitely going to grab the extra 50% thrust. So if I go to my character now, well, upgrades. Yep, there we are. Plus 50% thrust. That is amazing. So a shop there and a shop there. Ooh, okay. So all logic parts are unlocked there. That's obviously the choice, really. Shows you more information on the minimap. That's a reward. So possibly then we get the warp drive through other means. Something like a rare event, perhaps in the wormhole. Certain, I don't know, really. Like the worm boss, which apparently exists. Maybe that thing. I definitely want to see in the future. Since I didn't have a look at the last shop, or at least I didn't keep it in the footage, here we are. As you can see, I can't afford anything. Which is a shame, because this is amazing. I've also got one hull point back, not quite sure where that came from, perhaps just going through the wormhole heals you by one. I don't mind wasting the threat now, because I am going to be cool in the episode, and most likely I will be starting again afresh if I do this as a new series, so tell me if you'd like to see that and trying to do it all correct. This is just to see how things are going, and honestly, really happy with what I see. Sadly, not enough time to explore every last new thing like the worm boss and trying to figure out how we actually repair our ship in terms of the warp drive, but that I'm sure I will find out fairly soon. So apparently the worm boss is found in a temple. 
So, sadly, I didn't get to check out absolutely everything, but I thought I would like to have a quick look-see at the changes before I have to go on my little break for the holiday season, which I am honestly really looking forward to. So, I'm really hoping you enjoyed today's video. I didn't see everything, but I will be coming back to the game and making a much more comprehensive look at the update, and I'll try to condense it and make it a bit more entertaining, a bit more snappy. And I just want to see if people are still interested in Nimbatas, to be perfectly honest. So, with that, if you have enjoyed today's video, then of course, likes, favourite, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that Nimbatus is a series you wish to see continued in the future. Thank you so, so much for watching, and goodbye. Next time, a way more in-depth look. Have a lovely holiday season, everyone. Do take care. Goodbye.